Let's do this. Hello everyone and welcome on in. My name is Cage and we're going to be starting a new series today where we're going to attempt to learn how to play Shoto. For those unfamiliar with me, I've been playing games for a long time, but I've only recently become infatuated with fighting games over about the last year. I've tried them before that, like I grew up with the Killer Instinct on Super Nintendo as one of the fighting games I played most often, but it wasn't anything I was exceptionally good at. Recently, I've had some friends that really got me into the fighting game scene, and I love being a part of this. The FGC is amazing, and it's full of some amazing and wonderful people. So, with our series, we're going to be covering a few things. We're going to be doing some match analysis of, and learning how to play Shotos. In the process, we're going to be covering things like what causes us to take damage. How can we manage that situation better? Is this something we can practice globally, or is it matchup specific? We're also going to be taking a look at some of the easier things like, are we quick rising every time? Are we doing any unsafe sweeps? Are we needlessly jumping? All of these are things that we're going to be trying to cover as we progress and try to become a better fighting game player and understand how Shotos function. Typically throughout my fighting game career, I have not played Shotos. I've played Street Fighter and Guilty Gear is the two main that I play. And across those two, the ones that I played the most were Laura and Kami in Street Fighter V and Eno and Ramlethal in Guilty Gear. So as we go on further into these matches in the series, we're going to explore everything and hopefully we can become better fighting game players and you can come with me on that journey. Alright, and let's get this first round underway. So we got a crush countered here. It led, or it all stemmed from the fact that while she was down, we tried to use a medium kick. Unfortunately, we didn't space it properly, and the fact that she was crouching caused us to completely whiff, and she got a very solid punish on it. So I need to start trying to remember, medium kick is not a great answer for a start of a wake-up pressure kick. This one here, we actually got pressured on our medium Tatsu. So if we back up just a little bit, we'll see we got a little bit of damage off on her here. But with that overhead, we didn't prepare it into the proper combo. So she was able to move from that missed Tatsu into a little bit of pressure herself, even if she drops the combo. So on that one, we tried to go for a mix-up pressure, but we didn't hit the correct jump attack when we did the mix-up pressure, and it would just led to a whole bunch of trouble. Got a good crush counter. And that was once again an issue where we had the medium crouch kick that we led into the medium Tatsu. But without confirming it, that's going to cause us to take another good bit of chip damage. As you can see, we lost maybe 15% of our life for that one decision. And that was before she even finished the combo. So that final hit we took was just not respecting the block strings. We gave her a chance to go in with a fierce attack that we tried to interrupt. And we didn't answer appropriately for that chance. We do get a nice little combo here, punishing her DP. But once again, we hit that low medium kick into Tatsu, which leaves us very open to some damage. And she confirms it. She started to pick up on that. Good anti-air. Ooh, a good counter poke on the whiff. And a good crush counter. That is one other option I've noticed I need to pick up on, is when I get a crush counter, I want to find a more effective use that I can use to go in and actually pressure her. Oh, I'm starting to use the fireball pressure. And I went for another fireball, but I think that was... I think it was supposed to be another fireball. Ooh, she gets a good cross up. And we catch her... Because she was in that combo where she was doing her EX move, I felt I had the time to answer appropriately with the EXDP and get some good damage off. Final round. Fight. Ooh, there was another missed fireball. Alright, so she had a great jump in on us there. By throwing that fireball and then leading into the whiff DP, she knew we were trying to throw more fireballs to keep that pressure up. 
she recognized if she can move in on us, then she's going to be in range to get that jump attack. So especially with Kage, when I've got these light fireballs that are going to be coming out, I need to be more aware of making sure that their position is further away and they can't get a good jump attack on me or I get something that comes out a lot quicker like the lights compared to I think that one was supposed to be one of the heavies which gets a little more startup time but more damage. Good chance to get out of the corner there. And once again we go for that medium kick Tatsu leaving ourselves way open and she is ready to respond. Also, if you notice on that one combo, we can back it up a hair. When she gets the knockdown on us, we don't do a quick rise. She gets plenty of time to walk up and set everything up for what she wants to do. She doesn't do un end up doing anything good with it, but by not quick rising, we gave her that opportunity. Uh, and that was just unfortunate that we dropped the combo. But we have the medium Tatsu, and we are all trying to confirm it into the medium DP. And I think we may have hit the heavy DP by mistake. And she started realizing when we go for that full screen, we are trying to look for fireballs. This jury already has the answer to that. She knows she's got that dash where she can get behind us and do some pressure. So we're going to set that situation up one more time, I believe, because we finally learned from it. And we get a good solid combo off of it. Oh, and we we unfortunately whiffed that combo, which would have got us a good bit more damage. Thankfully, she doesn't follow up on it as well. Get a nice crush counter. And we go for the instant pressure. She gets us with the guessing on the G DP. Overall, we definitely found some good things that we can use to pick up on and improve for our next matches. We've got the ineffective use of pokes, where we throw out a couple ones that just straight up whiff and give them the opportunity to counterplay. We had the dragon punches that were attempts at fireballs that ended up just giving her massive opportunity to get another 20% damage combo off. And the biggest one that we were really bad about in this case was hitting that medium kick, which would get blocked, and still leading it into our Tatsu. We can do a better job of trying to either do like a medium crouching punch into a medium kick, medium tatsu, so we have more time to recognize if it's something that we can answer with, or we can just not go into it if it's blocked, which is the better answer. Yes. I All right, auto. on to the second match. Hmm. So it's you. Round one. Fight. So instantly I see he's going for these air fireballs and I like the decision to kind of just back up and be defensive. If we wanted to be more offensive with Akuma, I, it's really hard to get some good anti-air options, but because he stalls up in the air for a lot of that time, if you're not already jumping back, you can also rush under him, which I like a lot. All in all, we, I think we made a good decision on this one to kind of be defensive with those fireballs. So he got us with a sweep on that one. We got a nice little poke after his Tatsu, so we got some good damage, but we didn't link it to anything and failing that combo kind of hurt us. Overall, I think we just need to get some better execution and better combo lines to combat that, but I like the decision to poke after that. Ooh, and we had a good air to air. Since we both jumped at the same time, I opted to go for the kick rather than to try and do something fancy. Just end it and be safe. So two things, we got the unsafe sweep here, but on top of that we also gave him a free jump in while we were ready to go in a very advantageous spot to get a nice anti-air. So he's got a good chance to kind of counter sweep or get a, some kind of knockdown and counter damage us. Just like that. Oh, and we got a good counter on his DP. We are prepared for it. And we just let him get some free poke in there. Unfortunately, we guessed poorly on high low guard, and he got some good mix-ups and poke damage on us. 
Overall, nothing to be too worried about. Just kind of comes with the game. But once again, we hit that medium kick Tatsu. That just is going to lead to us getting harassed. Oh, and he catches us with an unsafe medium Tatsu because we tried to go for some kind of fireball there to harass him, but we didn't get it out. Oh, we got really lucky on that. We went with a very aggressive jump kick and there was nothing up there to hit. I'm not quite sure what was happening. I think I may have been trying to go for like the jump Tatsu and failed the input coming down. We get a good harass, waiting for him to defend. Ooh, we had a nice little 1-2-3 combo. Gave us a chance to confirm before we committed to the Tatsu. Uh, wake up from a good distance away. And we had a nice easy answer for that. He's not being very aggressive compared to some of the others. I do like his sweep into the skill activation there. He takes an unsafe move and turns it safe. So we're just going to let him do defensive on us. Oh, and we get a nice activation. We see he's in the air. We get the activation to pull it in, push him to the ground, avoiding his air fireball and winning the round. I like that reaction. Ooh. So we took a huge damage just for wanting to start the game off with Fireball right out the gate. Just going for a simple Fireball, that his is going to lead into him getting a huge combo on us. So I think if we start the game just being a bit more defensive and not focusing on trying to be aggressive out the gate, we could have prevented a large chunk of this. Like there's a good 25% of our health bar gone. Oh, look at that. We finally learned. We hit the medium button, but the ground medium kick was stopped, so we didn't lead into the Tatsu. Then we back up, create some space, prepare for anti-airs and some other situations. But once again, we start going back into buffering it for no reason. Look at that. Even though he blocked our attack on jumpin, we still decided not to go for our full buffer kick Tatsu. We just get the one kick, reset it into a jump. Worst situation there is he gets some kind of interruption between teching out or V-shifting, but he didn't have a great option since he'd already committed to not anti-airing there. It was a bad decision to jump in, but we made it work. Oh, and he came in with a low. We had a good whiff kick there. We catch him with a nice little counter. Oh, and he gets a great Oki and reset. Okay. We need to be more patient. And we get a great anti-air there to end the round. Wins. Being patient, waiting for the anti-air, gave us the opportunity that we've been looking for. We finally hit him with one when he doesn't throw his fireball mix-up. We still had some of the same problems that we had when it came to the jury. That medium Tatsu has done a lot of damage to us. There were at least four different counts in this one, and I think seven or eight in the jury matchup, where it took at least a total of two and a half, three full life force from us. That is where I'm going to be getting the most significant advantage of practicing. So that's going to be my next goal. When I go into pra these practice modes, I'm going to focus on hitting that medium Tatsu only when I can get the confirm. I'm going to be checking to see if I can do like a two link into the medium Tatsu instead to make it more consistent. And I think that'll be a great change. Thank you very much for sticking with me through the video. If you learned something great, if not, well, I just hope your wake up DPs aren't blocked.